Former President Trump's CPAC speech over the weekend yesterday had a lot of big moments, and maybe this was the most important. We're not starting new parties. You know, they kept saying, he's going to start a brand new party. We have the Republican Party. It's going to unite and be stronger than ever before. I am not starting a new party. There you have it. So the president says that the current party will unite. But the truth is, we all know the old guard, the warmongers, the so-called moderates who have allowed liberals to drag this country to the left over the years are not going to go along with Trumpism. The former president knows that as well. He's announced he'll be actively working to unseat the anti-Trumpers. He named a number of politicians on his hit list yesterday and had this to say to our own Mark Halperin. Do you have confidence in, in Mitch McConnell and Liz Cheney, who are two current elected leaders, to do the mission that you want to do, the kind of opposition to the Biden agenda that you want? Well, they have to do their job. If they do their job, great. I think uh, Liz Cheney is a hopeless case, and uh, Mitch will see whether or not he can do his job. He went easy on McConnell there. That's a calculated move. But imagine being Mitt Romney, Adam Kinzinger, Bill Cassidy, Susan Collins, or even Liz Cheney right now. That's horrifying. Maybe Romney will just become a Democrat. Who knows? He already marches with BLM. He'll fit right in. The Republican Party needed better definition. It's happening right now. A party of working people with national pride who want lower taxes, less entitlement, more personal responsibility, smaller government, and an American foreign policy that prioritizes America and Americans. How novel. For years, Republicans stood by while the guts of this country were ripped out. Here's a question for you. There were 43 Republicans in the Senate in 1993. Can you guess how many of them voted against NAFTA? Out of 43, only 10. 33 Republicans voted for the deal that Donald Trump calls the worst trade deal ever signed in this country. This party has been turned on its head. Major corporations loved NAFTA. Globalists loved NAFTA. But how'd that play out for regular working Americans? A globalist Republican now won't fit inside this new party. Anyone still looking out for corporate interests, any politician not embracing populism, is toast in this new party. There is no energy behind Ben Sass and Mitt Romney. Everybody knows that. Old guard Republicans are trouble, in major trouble, in any post-Trump national election. Trump peeled back the onion and showed everybody how this game works. D.C. hates him for it still. Conservatives are not interested in voting for politicians that only look out for themselves, corporations, and special interests any longer. They've seen the light. And while many may wish Trump behaved better at times, he is real, and he is larger than life. And the rest of the field, as it stands now, pales in comparison to him. Democrats and the media know that, which is why they're so enraged, outraged, to see him making such a swift return to politics. Here's John Brennan, you know that name, earlier today, who may not be identifying as a white man for much longer. Take a listen. I'm increasingly embarrassed to be a white male these days. <laughs> and what a, like what I see of my other white males saying. But it, it just shows that with, the, with very few exceptions, like Mitt Romney, Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, there are so few Republicans in Congress who value truth honesty and integrity. And so they'll continue to gaslight the country the way that Donald Trump did. He's a guy that was a communist back in college, by the way. And could there be a bigger endorsement for Trumpism? Whatever John Brennan doesn't like, that's probably exactly what we should be doing. The people that John Brennan likes, we probably don't need. By the way, John, nobody is more embarrassed that you are a white male than the rest of us white males. So we can understand how you feel. Democrats should be very worried. Schools are still closed, and the situation at our southern border is a disaster that is getting worse by the day. Wait till you see the next block of the show. If this nonsense continues, the midterms are going to be a bloodbath for Democrats. Joe Biden has had the most disastrous first month of any president in modern history. That's true. Already the Biden administration has proven that they are anti-jobs, anti-family, anti-borders, anti-energy, anti-women, and anti-science. Meanwhile, anti-Trump Congressman Adam Kinzinger from Illinois characterized the Republican Party like this. 
I think in terms of what is our vision for the future, certainly not united. I, I think we are a party that's been for too long peddling in fear, using fear as a compelling way to get votes, and fear does motivate. But after a while, fear can destroy a country, it can destroy narratives, and it can destroy a democracy. And we have to quit peddling that. Sounds like a Democratic strategist, a party of fear. It sounds exactly like something a liberal would say, and that's exactly what Adam Kinzinger basically is. Anyone watching the Biden administration's first month and not afraid doesn't really belong in the Republican Party. Our southern border is now just open, and it's flooded with people. 4,000 people crossing every day, and it's getting worse. The current administration is owned by a teachers union that's refusing to open schools against the recommendation of experts. Biden has announced that racial equity is a national emergency. One of his senior advisors told Axios last night they're working on a reparations plan. So the message to Adam Kinzinger is, if you're not worried, that tells us everything we need to know about you. Back to CPAC, the Trump straw poll was another big moment. Remember this, that it was held in Orlando, and the numbers are right here. Trump at 55%, DeSantis the next closest at 21%. The president yesterday still contended the last election was stolen from him and stopped just short, barely, of announcing that he's running again. Who knows? I may even decide to beat them for a third time, okay? Uh, you see, that comment got a big roar from that crowd. So what will that look like if the president does run again?